My name is Susan Webster and I'm the Head of Policy and Campaigns for MND Scotland. MND Scotland provides care and support for those affected by motor neuron disease. We campaign on their behalf and fund research to help find a cure for the illness. MND is a rapidly progressing muscle wasting terminal illness. It stops signals from the brain reaching the muscles. The muscles start to waste and weaken and eventually stop working. Average life expectancy with MND is just 18 months from diagnosis. Almost 200 people are diagnosed each year in Scotland, but only 400 have the illness at any one time because it moves so quickly. As MND progresses, rapid degeneration leads to paralysis, often leaving people unable to walk, talk, eat or breathe unaided. Cognitive and behavioural changes can also take place. As you might imagine, the impact of MND is enormous. Not only is a person with MND dealing with the devastating news of being diagnosed as terminally ill, but they're confronted with the reality that during the limited amount of time they have left, they will become more and more disabled. The illness often starts with someone struggling to tie their shoelaces, for example, or slurring their words to potentially and relatively quickly not being able to speak, move around their home or care for themselves. This includes the most basic of tasks, such as getting in and out of bed or washing. MND also has a huge impact on the family and friends of someone with the illness. Not only are they lo facing losing someone they love, but caring for a person with MND can be a 24-7 role, with unpaid carers often reporting burnout. As MND progresses, people with the illness can become reliant on wheelchairs, which tend to be larger than your average wheelchair, and other bulky equipment for the home, such as hoists and hospital beds. People with MND need adaptations to their homes, such as ramps, wet rooms, widened doors and stair lifts. If adaptations to their home are not practical because, for example, they live in a first floor tenement flat, an alternative home needs to be found. However, these services can struggle to keep up with the rapid pace of MND. People with the illness can wait months for adaptations, with wet rooms taking a particularly long time. Likewise, when an alternative accessible home is needed because adaptations can't be made, people with MND find themselves put on long waiting lists, sometimes losing out to someone else because they were on the waiting list for longer. Waiting lists don't work for someone with an average life expectancy of 18 months. And systems like the bidding system or choice-based lettings are just completely impractical for a person with MND. This is where MND Scotland's advocacy service can become a bit of a lifeline for families affected by the illness. When you have an illness like MND, the last thing you need is to find yourself battling to get adaptations in another home quickly. You've got enough on your plate. Our advocacy workers support families to navigate their way through the bureaucracy to secure what people with MND need and to fight their corner when it's taking too long. When you have a profoundly disabling illness like MND, waiting for an adaptation or alternative housing while in an increasingly inaccessible home is really impossible. For nearly a year, 67-year-old Drew and his wife lived in a caravan with no running water or central heating, 50 miles away from their home and support network while they waited for an accessible home. But this was preferable to the couple continuing to live in their two-storey house with an upstairs bedroom and bathroom, stairs inside and out, which they felt was too unsafe for Drew as his health deteriorated while they waited. For eight months, Sumim's daughter struggled to take her to the local leisure centre twice a week for a shower while they waited for a wet room to be installed in their home. Difficult as this was, it was preferable to carrying her upstairs to their only shower at home. Tragically, Shamim died on the day the wet room was finally completed. Sadly, these cases are not unusual. Our advocacy workers find themselves firefighting the same issues for people with MND time and time again. And for them, it can be terribly disheartening not to see things improving for the next person with the illness. It shouldn't be this way. And that is why MND Scotland also campaigns for better services for people with the illness, in the hope that eventually 
People with MND can, find their, can spend their final months creating precious memories with loved ones instead of battling for what they need. MND Scotland published its manifesto for the 2021 elections in January and in it we call on the next Scottish Government to introduce a national accessible housing strategy with the aim of improving provision of home adaptations and accessible housing. Focusing on adaptations, our first ask is for people with MND to be fast tracked. People with MND are often told they could wait a year for their adaptations. With little time on their side, if they can, many pay thousands of pounds to have them installed themselves. Adaptations make a huge difference to their quality of life and systems to fast track people with MND must be put in place. We also need simplified processes. The processes used to have adaptations approved vary enormously from one local authority to the next. There can be a huge amount of red tape and it can be excessively slow. People with MND need their adaptations fast so they can get the maximum benefit. In the knowledge that a person with MND will deteriorate quickly, anticipatory planning for adaptations, coordinated by a trained individual, could help reduce waiting time significantly and relieve the burden on families already struggling to cope with this devastating disease. An investment in adaptations. As the population ages, demand will rise and delays will lengthen. This needs to be mitigated with investment or people with MND will risk never getting the adaptations they need in time. <clears throat> and for when adaptations can't be made and an accessible home is needed, again, people with MND need fast track. The systems used to match people to Scotland's accessible social housing are a postcode lottery. And as I said, the bidding system and waiting lists just don't work for those with 18 months life expectancy. People with MND need fast track. Cross tenure standards and schemes. A space and quality standard for new homes and benefit people with MND who rely on the bulky equipment I highlighted earlier. Space rather than number of rooms needs prioritised. An identification and marketing scheme for accessible homes would establish if homes are truly accessible, speeding up processes and reducing pressure on social housing. Empty or void homes, which could be made accessible. A lack of accessible housing across tenures and across the country leads to a squeeze in accessible social housing. However, demand cannot be met. A national minimum target is needed with accessible homes at the heart of future housing policy. We are not alone in calling for these things. Most of what is highlighted here benefits all disabled people. And that is why many of these asks feature in the Qualities and Human Rights Commission report Housing and Disabled People, Scotland, Scotland's Hidden Crisis. Accessible housing needs to be at the heart of the next Scottish Government's housing policy. People with MND, for one, don't have time to wait. Thank you. Happy to take questions later.